you are listening to the Gourmet Pens Club podcast. This is a collective of creators and callings that bring us together. Here are your hosts, Aziza and Candice. Hi, I'm Aziza, aka Gourmet Pens. I'm a huge fan of creating with my fountain pens and miscellany of tools, and I love sharing my love and passion for this hobby with you. My collection is all about fun materials, special pieces, and serious nibbage. Hi, I'm Candace, aka Inks and Anchors. I have a love for tangling, lettering, purple and turquoise, and some really special sailor pens, which inspire the anchors in my name. My collection now includes a range of magnificent makers, exquisite materials, and architect nibs. We wanted to start this podcast because not everyone is able to get to a pen meet or a pen show. And in our experience, these events are the places where you can find your tribe of people who understand and love the things that you do. And we all get to geek out. So come join us and get the warm pen friend fuzzies with the Gourmet Pens Club. Let's Let's hang hang out. out. The most recent thing that we have done is attended the DC Pen Show and... It is, Candice, I believe this is your first big U.S. show? It is. It was. It was my first big U.S. pen show and where I stayed overnight, and it was a wonderful time. Okay, okay. So what is, aside from the people of a pen show, which is the most obvious thing that is the most exciting thing, ignoring the pens truly, What was the best part for you? Like, what was your favorite takeaway or your favorite moment? What was special for you? So in terms of um, what was special, I'd I'd have to say, uh, I mean, I I did maybe overindulge a bit with the pens, but um, one that really stood out uh, to me is the Hello Tello pen that I that I got at the show. And we'll have it in the show notes and, and links to pictures. But this pen, I mean, it just hit all the boxes for me, checked all the boxes. It's pink. Um, the section was made out of pastel um, primary manipulation, which those of you who don't know, that um, is a material that's made by Jonathan Brooks at Carolina Pen Company. And it's a highly sought after material because it's one of these pores that he said he's not going to do again. And it's just quite fabulous. But the the work of John at um, Hello Tello, he's an artist, and the pen is a piece of art, in my opinion. The finial on the cap has pieces of Murano glass or Venetian glass inset into the cap, and it's just amazing. It has an ink window, orange ink window, orange pieces of glass in the in the cap, and to me that was that was sort of the highlight in terms of the pens that I purchased. Okay, but Candice, did you get any nib work done? Because Yes, there are pens, but I know you went with a couple of pens of your own to have adjusted or modified. Anything particularly special? Yes, I did get some nib work done. And, I, you know, um, after a point when you get into your collection and you you're, have a bunch of pens, and I think you really start focusing on the nibs. And that's indeed, that's why I like collecting custom pens and custom pen makers. I know people say, oh, it's just a Yovo nib or a Bach nib, but um, to me, it's a great opportunity to have some really special nibs and special grinds. So yes, I got three grinds done um, at DC, one of them from CY, Tokyo Station Pens, Mm -hmm. and that was done on a platinum C nib, um, which I have now inserted into a Yovo pen. and uh, he did a curved architect on the the regular writing side with a fine on the reverse, which happens to be my favorite. Architect grinds are my favorite grinds, but if I can flip it over and have a really fine grind on the other side, even better, right? So for my tangling. I also got a very similar grind from Pen Realm, Kirk Spear. And uh, J.C. Nib Taylor took a very, um, shall we say, not the greatest Bach nib. He, according to him, he said it wasn't Bach's finest hour, I think. And um, he did a wonderful cursive italic grind. Beautiful. I'm quite envious because I always enjoy the nib work you end up getting done. And I am just too lazy to sign myself up and get it done. But maybe one day. But speaking of nibs and serious nibbage, which I think is extremely appropriate here, Let me tell you about my favorite takeaway from the show. Okay, I know I said ignore the people, 
I'm going to mention the person because the person is related to the nib. And the person is Annabelle Sophie Hiller from Opus Cineris. And she flew in from the Netherlands. So she actually is now making nibs. So she's a trained goldsmith and a nibmeister. And so she's making these nibs. The first one she made is called the Harmonic Series. The first batch is actually 14 karat gold. So I have one of those from her and she brought it over for me. And I got to try it for the first time in front of her. And we were both so overwhelmed by the beauty of the experience that I'm pretty sure we were both crying. And uh, the second one that I got from her is actually a silver harmonic nib, which she hand engraved. So I also purchased several pens, overindulged a little bit. But these two pieces from Annabelle are certainly the highlight for me. So mentioning Annabelle, wasn't that the first time you saw her in a long time? Because I have photographic evidence of the reunion. Yes, you captured the moment where we saw each other again after six years. And the last time I saw her was indeed in the Netherlands. It has been a really long time. And oddly enough, we grew closer together when I moved back to Canada. And it's really one of those absence makes the heart grow fonder thing and when we saw each other I'm pretty sure we both shrieked in the ballroom yes and (laughs) and possibly shed a few tears but it was very much a wonderful reunion and that's part of what well actually that's truly what makes these nibs even more special to me is they started out as blobs of material, Annabelle's years of training and development and and research and practice and skill turned them into actual functioning writing nibs. And just in case anyone is curious, the gold harmonic is a big, juicy, round double broad, which is probably my favorite thing ever. And the silver harmonic is a lovely, gentle, cursive italic grind. They're both exquisite. I'm over the moon about them, and they've been inked since I got them, of course, and then emptied and then re-inked. I've done videos on both of them because those were the most requested videos that I've had in a really long time. Everybody wanted Mm. to see these nibs and how they looked and how they performed. And it's important to mention that Annabelle tuned these nibs for my hand. So not only is she using her skills as a goldsmith to create the nibs, She's using her nib meistering skills and nib grinding skills to make it exactly what I wanted. So it was really a beautiful experience. I'm so grateful I got to see her and pick up the nibs in person. And I'm really looking forward to seeing her again. I highly encourage. I mean, just DC is my first was my first big pen show. And I highly encourage people to to come out to them. I mean, indeed, I think obviously beside the people really to see a nibmeister and sit down and have your pen worked on is, I think, as a fountain pen collector, fountain pen user, that is um, the most satisfying thing, I think. And can't mention DC without also mentioning Nib Wars. That um, that happened uh, on the Friday night. Estabrook um, sponsored the event and Annabelle was uh, one of the nibmeisters. Yes. I mentioned uh, CY, um, Pen Realm, Kirk Spear, and then um, JJ Blacks, Joshua, um, uh, the four of them had a uh, basically a nib wars nib grind off. I don't know what they what, what you would call it, but it was uh, a really fabulous event. I know that there were you know there's there's room for improvement as always, but it's a first. It was the first time they had the event. Um, I happened to have I sat close to the front, and therefore I really found it I was enjoying the show but I think if you're further back in the room perhaps you couldn't see as well so maybe overhead cameras would be a good thing next time but it was a fun event I thought I don't know do you want to explain you were one of the judges so do you want to explain maybe how it worked and um yes I can do that yeah I was one of the judges um along with Barry Gabay and Carrie of Fountain Pen Day and it was a setup where they had to do all four of them had to do a round of grinds based on a prompt so one of the prompts was uh, if you had to rewrite the declaration of independence today 
what nib or what grind would you use? And so they would take this prompt, pick their nib, grind it in 10 minutes. The level of skill of these nibmeisters is unbelievable to be able to whip up something so fast that was quite delightful to write with is incredible. And I just have to say that this is so cliche, but they really are all winners because <laughs> they were, they all did a beautiful job. And I think what they did was very admirable. And then in the end, the next day, Esther Brooke was raffling off all of the grinds. So in the end, there were 12 grinds and you could buy raffle tickets and the proceeds from the raffle tickets were donated to causes to help the Ukraine. And then you could possibly win one of these pens. I know a friend of mine won one of Annabelle's nibs. And I think it was the EDC nib that she won, which was one of my favorite nibs. So in all, the the event was a lot of fun. I think it was a really nice way to showcase the incredible talents and skills we have in the pen community. And... I just think that it's a beautiful way for for us to recognize the people that really make this whole experience even better. So as we were discussing Nimmeisters. We'll have in the show notes a link to where the um, one of the nibs that was won, um, Annabelle's EDC nibs, um, will be posted on my Instagram account. If you have the opportunity to go to a pen show, please, I think that that is something that you owe it to yourself as a serious fountain pen collector or a newbie to show up, meet pen friends and um, get nib work done. So even though this podcast is going to be released after a couple of pen shows, maybe I think we just want to mention a couple of the next pen shows. Uh, We had San Francisco. Yes, which looked incredibly fantastic. And I'm extremely jealous that I was not there, but very happy for everyone who was able to experience it. We have had Orlando. Okay, there's somebody else I want to mention, because this is a gentleman who also gives back a lot to our community. And he's he's a Robert Oster Signature Inc. So Robert Oster teamed up with the Orlando Pen Show for their show ink this year. And it's called Purple Tolerance. Proceeds are going to Reef Relief, which is dedicated to preserving the reefs of Key West. So this is something that Robert Oster does often. He gives back to the community, uh, a lot of charity work. And there's actually one more pen show in between that I want to mention. But first, (laughs) welcome to our first shenanigan. Today, we're doing Babble Bombs. Let's face it. The fountain pen community is full of terms that are difficult to pronounce if you've never heard them before. And in this segment, we pick a term or a name and ask our willing friends and family to try to pronounce it. Or not so willing friends and family. Uh, Today we have a someone instead of a term, and you may know him as the gentleman behind Applebaum. The term is the first name of this gentleman, which is spelled J-O-O-S-T. Our friend Chi decided to ask her brother to try and read that name out loud and well hopefully he gets it so how do you say this that's what yeah. i uh, i just want you to try to how do, how do you how would you pronounce this word touch me how goost <laughs> say that again juiced you think it's juiced yep yep it looks like it's juiced unless it's an english word then it's probably just like a, everything is silent Okay. Then it's just like st. <laughs> you ever realize that the word Q has like four different letters behind the Q and none of them are pronounced? <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Okay. That wasn't at all staged or scripted. <laughs> and I thought that was perfect because that's, you know, Hilarious. exactly how at all our pen meets, there's at least one instance of how do you say this? How do you pronounce this? Well, um, my favorite part of that clip was, unless it's English and everything is silent. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, that so, was fantastic. So we actually do have Mr. Applebaum recorded saying his name. 
so we could have the proper pronunciation. So let's hear it. You want my full name with all my names like Johannes, Petres, Maria, Applebaum, or just Joost Applebaum? What do you want? Joost Applebaum? The most beautiful name in the world. Joost Applebaum. So it's toast with a yo. <laughs> if that helps at all. Yo toast. Yo toast. I think it's an excellent way to celebrate our first Babel Bomb. Babel, because earlier, I'm pretty sure Candace said Babel Bomb, which is Apple Bomb. <laughs> That's right. And it's Apple Bomb, not Apple Bomb. So it's a whole Babel Bomb Babel of bomb. Apple Bomb. That's right. <laughs> anyway, let us ask for your suggestions for future Babel Bombs. Please send us an email at gourmetpensclub at gmail.com or through direct message at Gourmet Pens on Instagram. You you can find me. There's going to be links for you to find me. Or and Inks and Anchors on Instagram. Also will be links for you too. So if you have a word that you're not sure about or a word that you think will be hilarious for our innocent friends and family to try to pronounce, please submit it. And we look forward to hearing your words or trying to pronounce your words. <laughs> anyway. Uh, speaking of Applebaum, on by the time this comes out, I will have already attended. But my plan is to visit Applebaum in Boston when I attend the Boston Pen Show, which is September 17th to 18th. I'm going to tour the new shop. It He's actually taken over the Bromfield Pen Shop. So I'm really excited to showcase the new look and all the goodies that he has at that location. And then we will be attending the pen show where I get to see Annabelle again, which I'm very excited about still. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, it's a pretty short show. It's only two days, uh, which means I have more time to spend with pen friends, hopefully, and not too much time to shop, hopefully. But I cannot say for sure that I will leave without anything. So I guess we'll find out next episode when we recap the Boston show. That's right. So I think that brings us to the end of our first episode. You can find us online as Gourmet Pens. Inks and Anchors. And we are available through email at gourmetpensclub at gmail.com. Uh, you can subscribe using your favorite podcast subscription mechanisms. And if you would like to offer feedback or have any questions, comments, or notes of love or constructive criticism, I guess, <laughs> Please find us and please share your thoughts. The schedule is fairly new and up in the air, but once we get all established and figured out, we will have something regular for you. But in the meantime, hopefully you enjoy listening to us blab about pens and serious snibbage. Thank you so much for listening. And come hang out with us next time. I'm going to go with no, they didn't know. <laughs> what was it? Did anyone listen to that? Was that oh, yeah. a, what, what was it? An ink or was it a, the ink, right? Oh, pen, the pen? Well, well there's also the whole. <laughs> hmm. It doesn't start that way. You make it wetter. <laughs> but um, bum. <laughs> but um, bum. Okay. <laughs> you might have to lick the nib because. <laughs> To get it started. To get it started. <laughs> okay, the imagery, because typically I lick my nibs when the ink is all dried out, and but the now, imagery is just wrong. But now every time you do that, oh. you're going to think of this. Oh, dear. <laughs> but it is a happy ending. It is happy ending. It is, because it's like, oh, yes. now you write just the way I want you. That's an awful name. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there's also Wancha, where people have struggled with the name. Wancha? Wancha? Like Wancher? Is it Wancher? It is not. It's, uh, they pronounce it... Wan cha. And so there's also well, the obvious. There's obviously the, the waiter. <laughs> Which is, I mean, the thing is, it, we're so childish, but we're also talking about wet broads and big nibs and, and juicy, fat, juicy fat tipping things. and, you know. Juiced. Juice. <laughs> Juice. <laughs> yeah, that too.